Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net and welcome to today's video demonstration. In this tutorial, what I'm going to be showing you is the process behind one of the latest concepts that I've done up for Rob Arnold's Replicator comic book. And he's so far gotten to me to do a fair few of these character concepts for the upcoming issue of Replicator. And I've got to say, there have been some pretty fun characters to work on, and I'm looking forward to seeing them come to life, in a sense, when they jump on to the actual comic book and start laying the sequentials for it and actually illustrating the narrative. But for now, it all begins here by defining the look of the character and how they're going to appear. And a lot actually goes into that, especially when you're talking about comic book characters, because it's important that even when they're being drawn from a distance, they are still recognizable as the same character. And that's probably something that a lot of people somewhat overlook, because you know, they get caught up in the details. They don't necessarily really consider how is that character going to look, not close up, but actually from a distance. How are they going to look when they're presented within different poses, for instance, as well, in these different contexts? Because it's not like they're only going to be illustrated within this straight up and down design presentation, they're actually going to be moving on the page, they're going to be brought to life, and who knows what kind of poses they're going to be placed in and from what angles those poses are going to be observed. And so that kind of needs to be thought about as the character is being designed. And even though we're just starting out with a very, very rough sketch here for the character, these are the things that are going through my mind. So I'm asking myself, well, what are the larger overall recognizable shapes going to be that I can implement into the character's design and the clothing assets? and their hairstyle, and, you know, their facial features. How can I make them as recognizable as possible without, of course, making them too different that they stand out like a sore thumb? Because, you know, the further that you get away from the idealized, generic visuals that have been established within the comic book art medium, which, you know, you can see with characters like Superman and Batman and really any other, you know, ruggedly handsome, classically handsome, I should say, character. You know, you're going to get that strong jawline. You're going to get the proportionally accurate face, which is set to the idealized positioning of those facial features. And so, you know, you don't want to necessarily travel too off track away from that because the more that you do that, the more hard it's going to be for the audience to relate with the character in the first place. So the reason that we try to keep some of those generic attributes present within the designs that we create for our characters is so that we can create a baseline of relativity that people can instantly connect with. They recognize it, they get it straight away. It's not so different, so outside their realm of experience that they're going to have to sit there and try to figure out what it is you're showing them. You want them to be able to instantly connect with your character, but at the same time, you still want to try to balance that out with something that is different, something that's new to them, because the other thing that the audience really, really loves to sink their eyeballs into is something novel, something that hasn't been done before, which is still relatable enough that it's going to allow them to be able to understand it and get it straight away because if they have to sit there and struggle to figure out what it is you're trying to show them if the idea especially isn't coming across in a clear way that's understandable to them then ultimately they're going to automatically disconnect the immersion won't be there they simply won't be engaged this is one of the reasons as to why we don't necessarily like things that we're unfamiliar with. For example, why you would feel more comfortable talking to a friend that you've known for years than you would a stranger that you've only just met. There's that familiarity there, and the same applies to our characters. This is why 
Comic book characters like Superman have become so popular and been replicated again and again and again and essentially established throughout every other comic book character that's come from there after them. And so this is something that I try to strike a balance with when it comes to designing my own characters. I try to come up with a look, and of course this isn't actually my own character, this is a character that was already essentially the look for the character had been established by Rob in a previous issue of Replicator, so I had something to work off there, but there were some adjustments and some changes that needed to be made. For example, this character's outfit has been completely reinvented for this new and improved design that I'm creating here in front of you. And you know, we've rejigged his hairstyle a little bit in order to make it so that the personality of this character comes through in a bit more of a clearer way. So you want to make sure that all the ingredients, so to speak, that you're including into your character design lends toward who they are, their attitude, their personality. You know, if you think about the kind of personality that your character would have, well, what kind of clothing would they dress in as a result? You know, really understanding people on that level can go a long way to creating a convincing character that seems real, that seems like they have some life to them. Because if every character stands the same, if they're all the same proportions and they all dress alike, then that contrast between the cast of characters within your book is really just not going to be there. And so there will be a lack of interest Because they're all the same, they simply won't stand apart. And that means, in other words, that the characters within your story are going to feel boring. They're not going to have any uniqueness about them. And so you want an interesting cast of characters. You want to mix them up a little bit. And, you know, this is why comic book character archetypes exist in the first place. Because, you know, there is some variation there between the well-known character archetypes that have already been established and you can play into those you can mix them up a little bit you can see what how you might be able to mix those pre-established classic looks for the characters that are already out there and incorporate them into your own to create again a character which is recognizable yet at the same time unique and different something new that the audience can, you know, pique their interest with and really get into. So this character here, he's got, he's a, he's a, supposed to be a cocky type of character. You know, he's got a, a bit of a, an overabundance of confidence as far as, you know, the kind of attitude that he has. And I think that, I'm trying to, and I had talked to Rob about this as well, about how we were going to get that to come through. And the the hairstyle was definitely to do with that. And also, you know, the jacket as well, the oversized, uh, you know, weapon that he's got there holding in his hand. And, you know, those things, those characteristics, you know, thinking about, well, again, considering his attitude, what kind of weaponry would he use? How would he, you know, dress? And how would he style his hair? Those things are really playing into the character in a way which suggests who he is in a non-verbal manner. You should never have to explain who the character is outright through the dialogue within your comic book, it really should be a given. There should be enough visual clues there to allow the audience to kind of, you know, th- they need to be able to suspect who a character is without you blatantly explaining it to them. Because it could mean that if you have to do that, that you simply haven't created a character design which is congruent with the way that they are. Their look doesn't make sense for the kind of attitude or personality that they possess. So you want to make sure that all that links up because if there are inconsistencies there, then that breaks the audience's suspense of disbelief. So you want to try to make sure that within this world that you're drawing them into, that everything makes sense. Because if everything makes sense, 
then they will be completely hypnotized and absorbed within that world. It'll be essentially like the Matrix. If you remember the movie The Matrix, the one point at which Neo really realized that this Matrix was a real thing, besides the fact that he'd been already sucked out of it, but it was he saw this cat glitching out within the hallway while he was in the Matrix, and so there was this inconsistency there that all of a sudden he noticed and he realized, oh, you know, this is not the real world, right? And so he was clicked out of that state of, you know, you could say hypnotic presence where you know he was in the world but then all of a sudden that inconsistency happened and now hey you know he's realized well this is uh clearly just you know it's a manufactured version of reality now of course when it comes to your comic books you are manufacturing a whole new world a universe and all the characters within it are manufactured by you but at the same time, even though it might feel that way for the audience going into the comic book initially, within the first few seconds, you want them to be completely enthralled with the story that you've you've coaxed them into. And ideally, if you've written it well and the illustrations look great and the characters make sense, then you'll keep them there and they'll forget about the, the world that they're in, the outside reality, and they'll be completely absorbed within the one that you've created for them. And that's really the key. That's what creates an immersive experience, whether you're creating a comic book or you're designing a video game or producing a movie. At the end of the day, its success really relies on your ability to draw the viewer in and hold them there, hold their attention. Because the moment that that attention is broken, that's the moment that you know there's a good chance they're going to walk away from it and put it down. And who knows when they'll be back or if they'll be back to finish it off. So let's talk about some of the technical execution of this character design sketch here. We've done a few of them and I've walked you through it. You can check those previous videos out. You know, the other concepts that I've done up for Replicator on the channel, of course. You know, again, we're racking up the character designs here and it's been really, really fun to work on this project with Rob. But you'll notice that, you know, we got that rough sketch down and that's really the, the basic fundamental structure that I've got established before I decide to really commit to it and go over the top, clean up that line work, apply the line weights and the rendering and the shadows and really give it that additional level of depth and dimension. And you can see here that even though we started out with a very rough, rudimentary, basic sketch that... Hey, I mean, in and of itself, it probably looked okay. Like there was enough information there. And I even sent that sketch off to Rob just to ask him, you know, is this the direction that you want me to go in for this concept? It's always good when you're working with a client, especially when it comes to concept art and, you know, design work. You want to make sure that because, you know, you're creating essentially something from nothing and you're trying to have the idea that you're coming up with match up with their expectations, that as you're developing it, you're communicating with the client that you're sending off you know the basic draft the preliminary sketches making sure that you get the thumbs up because if you carry it all the way through to the end without their okay without checking in with them every once in a while who's to say that they're you know, going to be happy with the end result that you've come up with, even after you've placed in all the, you know, the line weights and the intricate hatches for the rendering. Yeah, that might all look fantastic. And, you know, one of the reasons that they've hired you is because you are a talented artist. But at the same time, if the design doesn't check out, if the design itself doesn't seem to be what they want then ultimately they're going to knock you back and that's not their problem it's kind of uh you know you're on it's something that you have to kind of take responsibility for and make sure that you are communicating with them the whole way through and that's something that I always try to make sure I do I say hey you know how's it looking is this kind of what you're after just to kind of get a feel you know find my way around the design and to figure out what point I need to be at in order to bring it through to completion. 
And when you can kind of step it one bit at a time in that way, in small chunks of progress, then ultimately you will be able to arrive at a design that looks great and is also structured fundamentally in the way that the client was expecting. You know, it's not just, you know, the idea that they wanted, it's an improvement on the idea that they wanted. It's even better than they could have imagined it would be. If you can arrive at a character design that that gives them that feeling where they're like, wow, it just totally blows them away and they're amazed at what you presented them, then you've really done your job well. You know, you never want to produce an underwhelming design, that's for sure. You want to make sure that the client is 100% happy and that, you know, they're they want you back for the next design, which is definitely what's happened uh, with me and Rob. You know, we've developed a really great working relationship and, you know, he's happy with what I'm doing. And, you know, we seem to click pretty well. Like usually what I will come up with will be just, you know, by luck what he's looking for. He might get me to adjust a few things here and there. For example, he wanted me to, to make the hair for this particular character. Look, you know, he used the word douchey, a little bit more douchey, right? Um, just to, so that again, his personality, his cocky, overconfident personality was coming through a little bit more. But you know, besides that, it was pretty much a home run. I think he wanted the beard to be bigger as well. So I made sure that I went back, gave him a bushier beard, and it was then ready to take that sketch to the next level of refinement, defining all the key contours with those slick, sharp, energetic line weights, and then going in with a much finer approach as far as the brush settings. So really turning down the size of that brush and rendering out all the folds and creases throughout his his clothing to describe the subtle, intricate forms within them. And to, again, just give the character that additional level of depth, polish up the presentation and deliver something to Rob that, you know, again, was was going to stand out to him that he was going to be happy with and I think that it's I'm proud of every concept that I create I'm really proud when I can put the work in and take it to a level uh, that you know really is the epitome of what I could have taken it with and of course you know this isn't inked and colored up it's not taken to that level yet but as far as a cleaned pencil drawing this is pretty much where I would take any other illustration to, whether I'm working for a client or myself. And, you know, even in the beginning, you know, me and Rob, we kind of had a little bit of a chat about, you know, how much I could do within the within his budget. And we came to a bit of an agreement. And uh, it was initially just me supposed to be doing these character design sketches. You know, they were supposed to be a little bit more rough than that. And honestly, I uh, I couldn't help myself. I went in and I started refining it, spent, you know, a little bit more time on it. And uh, that's when we had a bit of a chat about, you know, how we could, uh, you know, work together on a sketchbook and, you know, do up these videos for you guys. That was all part of it. While at the same time promoting Replicator. And, you know, ultimately... I think that when it comes to working with clients on an individual basis, you know, not every client is going to be the same. There's going to be different kinds of arrangements that you have depending on what works for the both of you. And hopefully you can actually get to a point if you're an artist, again, ideally you want to try to be making money from your art. And when you're working with clients, it's important to try to reach a nice sweet spot that the two of you are totally happy with. And sometimes maybe the client doesn't have a huge budget or maybe you don't have the time to do the work that they're asking for. And, you know, there's going to be these points within the negotiation that simply aren't going to be settled upon if you don't take the time to, you know, figure out what the needs of the client are, what your needs are, and then come to a middle ground, a compromise that you can both be happy with and ideally still work together, if that's what you want, of course. And there are also going to be times where, hey, it's just not going to work. You know, the client just isn't in a place where they're going to be able to work with you and you aren't in a place where you're going to be able to work with them. And that's 
totally fine as well. So now tackling the headshot of this character. I love headshots big time because that really allows me to get into the details of, you know, how they're going to look. And I think that the face really is an important point of interest that you want to focus on specifically because it is how it's a first point of entry to being able to relate to who they are. So when the audience looks at this character, the first place that their eyes are going to travel to are the eyes of the character because that's how we communicate with other people. We look them in the eye as we're talking to them to try to gauge their emotional state. You know, there's a reason that we have all these muscles throughout our face to allow us to express these very subtle hints as to how we're feeling and what we're thinking. That's why, you know, liar analysis, remember that TV show that used to come on, Lie to Me? That's why these guys exist, because there's so many different tells throughout the human face that can be picked up on in order to gauge, you know, whether someone's telling the truth, again, what they're thinking, where they're coming from, what their intentions are, their mental state, essentially, you know, whether they're angry, whether they're happy. Uh, you know, people can usually tell when you're angry. People can tell when you're annoyed. It's that, again, that nonverbal communication. In fact, they've done experiments on this in the past in different you know, so labs dedicated to psychology, and they have found, you know, even uh, if, you know, say that you get some bad news and you end up catching up with a friend later on in the afternoon, you know, even if you're excited to catch up with your friend and usually you guys get along great, then, you know, that emotion is going to linger. And even if you don't tell them about it, they're going to be able to know that something is up purely just Again, from those subtle expressions on your face, the way in which you hold your body. In fact, I believe that the statistics, well, not the statistics, but the facts are is that pretty much 90% of our communication comes from our body language and our tone and whatnot. Very, a very small amount of it is actually verbal. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're designing your characters, as you're posing them into different positions. And, you know, when it comes to comic book illustration, especially when you're moving the character around on the page, you want to make sure that that's coming across to the viewer because they've, all they've got is your visuals to go on in order to tell who this character is, not just, you know, from what they're saying, but also from how they're acting and the way in which they act, their actions are illustrated by you. So the more you can accurately convey that to a an understandable degree of detail that the audience can relate with, the better, the more effective you will be at your visual communication because at the end of the day, that's really what this is. So you can see that, you know, the way in which this character is standing, he doesn't have a name yet. He's kind of a mystery character. And uh, I believe later on Rob's going to announce exactly what his name is, but I don't know yet. It's even a mystery to me at this point, um, which is kind of awkward sometimes when you're working on a character, but you know, kind of exciting as well, because again, everybody loves a little bit of mystery. So even that said, I don't know his name, but I can certainly tell the type of person he is just from the way he's standing. You know, he thinks that he's the shit, essentially. Look at the guy. I mean, he's standing there. He's got this very, you know, overly confident posture to his body. And it really does say a lot about his personality and what it might be like if I was to meet this character to be in his presence. And, you know, the kind of things that would come out of his mouth, the, uh, the kind of attitude he would have. So... Yeah, I think that it's important in that sense to, even before you go into actually drawing up your character, just have a really solid idea as to who they are. Maybe you've written up a bit of a bio for them, and that can really inform how you present them at the end of the day. So we're just, you know, we're wrapping up that final concept sketch for his back view here. I like to try to, you know, get a front three-quarter view, a back three-quarter view of the character, if I can. And I also like to get those headshots in because they're super important to get right. Again, I, I love those because it feels like I'm getting to know the character on a much more intimate level. And uh, 
yeah, and then it's just going through and adding the final touch-ups to the hair mostly, which is, to be honest with you, where a lot of the details reside throughout a character. You know, for me, when I'm drawing up the head, it's always the hair that takes the longest to complete. But that pretty much wraps up this demonstration. I hope that you got a lot of value out of it, that, you know, as you were watching me draw up this character, you were studying the approach that I took, the different layers of production that I went through in order to get to the point where I could call it done because, you know, it doesn't just start off with that finished polished looking illustration. It starts off very rough. It starts off with a very basic foundation that really serves as the basis for the success of the character later on down the line. So, again, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like more comic art tutorials, tips, tricks, and videos, please head on over to howtodrawcomics.net where you'll find a bunch of free content, tons of resources over there in order to level up your comic book illustration abilities. We've even got a couple courses over there and I've got another course coming out real soon which you'll be able to uh, jump into if you're ready to take your comic art abilities to that, uh, that extra level. Um, you know, depending on where you're at, you may or may not want to get into the more advanced stuff. And if you do, then the courses are there. We've also got a few from Ed Foychuk and Robert Marzullo, who you probably know of if you're watching this video, because he's a he's a huge uh, comic book illustrator on YouTube, who has a lot of amazing tutorials of his own that you can check out. But uh, other than that. Keep on creating, keep on practicing, and I'll catch you in the next video.